what about the range for x? Well, the range for x should just be numbers. Okay, remember the question I have to ask now is if I look at all of these yellow slices, which one is the first one that I want to consider? Which one is the last one that I want to consider? So the smallest value of x that I want to consider is zero again. And then I will have there, I will actually have a pretty big slice and I will get smaller and smaller and smaller slices and it stops, I have to stop when x equals one. Afterwards, there's nothing else to integrate. So x goes from zero to one. Okay, and now see how in the inner integral, the bounds depend on x. In the outer one, you just get numbers. Because the questions that you have to ask to set up this one and to set up that one are different. Here the question is, if I fix a given x, if I look at a given slice, what's the range for y? Here, the question is, what's the first slice? What is the last slice? Does that make sense? Everyone happy with that? Okay, very good. So now, how do we compute that? Well, we do the inner integral. So that's integral from <laughs> zero to square root of one minus x squared of one minus x squared minus y squared dy. And well, that integrates to y minus x squared y minus y cubed over three from zero to square root of one minus x squared. And then that becomes well, root of one minus x squared minus x squared root of one minus x squared minus y minus x squared to the three halves over three. And actually, if you look at it for long enough, see this is one minus x squared times square root of one minus x squared. So actually that's also, so in fact that simplifies to two thirds of one minus x squared to the three halves. Okay, let me redo that maybe slightly differently. This was one minus x squared times y. So one minus x squared times y becomes square root of one minus x squared. Oops, x squared. Minus y cubed over three and then when I take y equals zero, I get zero, so I don't subtract anything. Okay, so now you see this is one minus x squared to the three halves minus a third of it, so you're left with two thirds. Okay? So that's the inner integral. The outer integral is the integral from zero to one of two thirds of one minus x squared to the three halves dx. And, well, I let you see if you remember single variable integrals by trying to figure out how this actually comes out to be, is it pi over two or pi over eight actually? I think it's pi over eight. Okay, well, I guess we have to do it then. <laughs> I wrote something on my notes, but it's not very clear, okay? So how do we compute this thing? Well, we have to do trig substitution. That's the only way I know to compute an integral like that. Okay, so we'll set x equal sine theta, and then square root of one minus x squared will be cosine theta. Okay, we're using sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And so that will become so two thirds remains two thirds. One minus x squared to the three halves becomes cosine cubed theta. Dx, well, 
sin, if x is sine theta, then dx is cosine theta d theta. So that's cosine theta d theta. And well, if you do things to substitutions the way I do them, then you should worry about the bounds for theta, which will be 0 to pi over 2. Or you can, you know, also just plug in the bounds at the end. Um, so now you have the 2 thirds times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine to the 4 theta d theta. And how do you integrate that? Well, you have to use double angle formulas. OK, so cosine to the 4. Remember, cosine square theta is 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. And we want the square of that. And so that will give us of, well, we'll have, so actually, one quarter plus one half cosine two theta plus one quarter cosine square two theta d theta. And how will you handle this guy? Well, using, again, the double angle formula. Okay, so it's getting slightly nasty. So, but I don't know any simpler solution except for one simpler solution, which is you have a table of integrals of this form inside the nodes. Yes? Uh, no, I don't think so, because if you take one half times cosine half times two, you will still have a half. Okay, so if you do, again, the double angle formula, I think I'm not going to bother to do it. I claim you will get, at the end, pi over eight, because I say so. <laughs> so, Okay, so exercise, continue calculating and get pi over eight. Okay, now what does this show us? Well, this shows us actually that this is probably not the right way to do this. Okay, the right way to do this will be to integrate it in polar coordinates and that's what we'll learn how to do tomorrow. Okay? 